एवरीवन वेलकम टू दी आदमा सिक्सटी सेवन माई नेम इज मयू एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द गॉस्पल ऑफ क्राइस्ट यस इट द गॉस्पल ऑफ क्राइस्ट इज टर्म एज द गॉस्पल ऑफ पीस एंड द गॉस्पल ऑफ क्राइस ऑफ क्राइस्ट यस पॉल सेज इन इन गलिशन चैप्टर वन सेक्स दैट आई मावल दैट यू टर्न अवे सो सून from the gospel of christ into the different gospel it means the gospel of christ itself is the gospel in order for him to say to different gospel amen and he also says in chapter romans chapter 1 verse 16 for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god to salvation you know the gospel itself is the power of god Amen. The gospel of grace that He died for us. Amen. Then that is why Bible also says that Christ crucified is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Only the gospel has the power to change lives. Amen. And further, it says in verse seventeen, for in it, in it means in the gospel, the righteousness of God is written. It doesn't say here the wrath of God is written. or the anger of the god is written or the sin of man is written no gospel is not the revelation of god's anger or man's sin is the revelation of god's righteousness from faith to faith to us amen that we have the righteousness of god by faith alone amen and as it is written the just shall live by faith in greek it's also can be written as just by faith shall live I mean justification by faith those who are justified by faith shall only live amen and he also says he continues to say is in uh, roman chapter 10 from verse 2 for i bear witness with them that they have zeal for god but not according to the knowledge for they being ignorant of god's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness now he's talking about his brother jude's brother okay they have zeal for god they love god but not according to the truth knowledge it means not according to the truth amen they say is they they are being ignorant of god's righteousness jesus offers free righteousness by believing in him but they ignore that and instead they by law they're trying to establish their righteousness But he says that have not sub and they have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Submitting to the righteousness of God is through faith. Amen. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Amen. That we are justified. We have this righteousness of God only by faith alone, and that is that it means to submit to the righteousness of God. He also says in Galatians chapter three, from verse ten to fourteen, for as many of our works of the law are under curse. Now, how how is that the people are under law are cursed? Do you know the book of Deuteronomy? There is a famous chapter twenty eight where it says where where it, there, there is a list of blessings and the curse. Amen. and you know what is the first verse initially what what it what does it say it says if you keep all the commandment and continue doing it then only you should you will have that blessings amen and bible says that no flesh shall be justified by the works of the law no one can keep the whole law it it just not you do it once no you continue to doing it amen and no one can do it and ultimately you bring curse when you are under law amen but christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become curse just like he became sin and we have become the righteousness of god in the same manner he have become curse that i we have that we might have the blessing of abraham on us amen and he says that yet the law is not of faith amen did you hear that the law is not of faith and bible says whatever is not of faith is sin 
does it mean law is sin for that you know we'll we'll see roman chapter 7 verse 7 where it says what shall we say then is the law sin certainly not on the contrary i would not have known sin except through the law for i would not have known covetousness unless law had said you shall not covet amen and he further says but sin taking opportunity by the law now he is not talking about only the ceremonial law or you know the sacrifice he's talking about the 10 commandments how do i know that he says i would not have known covetousness unless the law had said you shall not covet and it's one of the commandment of 10 commandments amen he's talking about the 10 commandments people say yes we are not as under ceremonial law we don't have to give sacrifice and all but we, we need to keep the 10 commandments no he's talking about the 10 commandments itself you know when you try to keep the commandments it says further but sin taking opportunity by the commandment by what by the 10 commandments produce in me all the manner of sin amen the more you try to keep the law the more you sin the more you fall into sin amen Hallelujah. Yes, we want to grow in holiness. We want to walk in holiness. But law is not the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Let's do it his way. His way is by the gospel of grace. Amen. And he, you know, he, uh, Paul demonstrates in Galatians chapter 4 from verse 21 to 26. Yes, he says, tell me, you who desire to be under law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by bondwoman, another by free woman. But he was the bondwoman, means Sarah, sorry, the Hagar was born according to the flesh. And he of the free, free woman, which was Sarah, through the promise, which things are symbolic. Now he is. You know, he's saying these things are symbolic. Sarah, he says to Hagar, for these two covenants, one from Mount Sinai. Yes, Hagar is Mount Sinai. It's a, it's a picture of Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage. You know, the law, the Ten Commandments was given on the Mount Sinai. Amen. And this, this brings to bondage. The more you keep, you know, you try to be under law, the more you will be in bondage. Amen. Hallelujah. And that is why Paul also says in Galatians chapter 5 that stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Amen. That we have to stand fast in our liberty. That you have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. Amen. We are under law. You know, Bible says that sin shall not have dominion over you. When you are under grace. Amen. Hallelujah. And then only he says in chapter 5 verse 16. I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of flesh. What does it mean to walk in spirit? You know spirit is also termed as spirit of grace and spirit of peace. When you walk in the spirit of grace that you are under grace. That you are justified by faith. You shall not, eat, you shall not fulfill the lust of your flesh. Amen. And you will walk in the fruit of righteousness. The more you are under grace, more you proclaim that we have the righteousness of God by faith in Christ, the more you will, have, you will produce the fruit of righteousness. That is love, joy, peace, self-control. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you.